For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. Let us pray. Our gracious God, we come before you this morning, Lord, with humble hearts. Lord, we come before you with thanksgiving as well. Lord, let us be able to worship you, worship you in spirit and truth this morning. Let your spirit just dwell in this place this morning, Lord, as we come to observe the second Sunday of Advent, Lord. As we come, Lord, to, to lift you up and to praise your name. As we come, Lord, to thank you for all your goodness and your greatness. And Lord, as we come to just embellish the loving kindness that you have shared upon us and be able to share upon others. For this is the day that you have made, Lord. Let us be glad in it. For this we ask in your son Jesus' name, amen. Our congregational hymn this morning is Away in the Manger. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Meditation. <laughs>
What a divine night that was, oh, holy night. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you this morning, Lord, for allowing us to come one more time into your sanctuary, Lord, to be able to give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. For it was on that divine night that your son was born, Lord. And so we come to observe this third Sunday of Advent, Lord, showing the perfect love that your son has given to us, sharing that love for us that we are to share with one another. Lord, let us come and worship you in spirit and truth this morning. Let your spirit just indwell this place in a mighty way, Lord, so that we can lift up our voices in praise, lift up our voices in prayer, and lift up our voices in song as we come to magnify you and to magnify your son. This we ask in your son Jesus' name, amen. Our congregational hymn this morning is Away in the Manger. Our responsive reading this morning is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 6 through 7. Jesus' birth foretold. For unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Amen. Amen. At this time, we will have our welcome and our announcements by Sister Mabel. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to give honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who's the head of my life. And I would like to, um, I'm glad to see the faces that are here. And I pray for travel and mercy that those are on their way. I will be doing announcements. Our Sunday school is now back in session each Sunday morning at 9.30 at the church and on Zoom. For those of you who would like to join us online, please send your email address to Reverend Sharon Johnson as soon as possible so she can prepare materials. The following members are celebrating birthdays this month. 
We pray that God blesses them on their great day. Mr. Clarence Dixion was Friday, December 3rd. Mr. William Broadhurst was Thursday, rather it's Thursday, December 23rd. And Mr. James Polite is Tuesday, December 28th. Today is the last day to order your memorial poinsettias. You can order a flower in memory of a loved one or as a gift for someone this Christmas. Write a brief message in the memory or in honor of, of. You can also order a virtual poinsettia that will be shown on our website. Use an envelope in the lobby or email your virtual request. The poinsettias are $10 each. Today is the last day to place your to place your order, so please place your order today. There will be a pastor's aid meeting immediately following service today. All pastor aid members are asked to attend. And I want you to notice that our poinsettias look so beautiful. So if you can put your order in, and uh, uh, hopefully we will be able to have them all gone um, by the holidays. I'd like to say I'm pleased to be here. The Lord gave me another week, and I'm so thankful. Actually, he gave all of us another week, and he's about to give us a whole new year. And we have to be very thankful because the year has been, you know, up and down. And he's given us the strength to make it through. And I, I pray that we all make it through until the next year anyway. But in the meantime, we're here today, and we need to celebrate that. Um, do we have any visitors, guests? Well, we do. Um, and is, uh, <laughs> if you want to let us know who you are, it would be appreciated. So. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Well, God bless everyone. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Sister Mabel. Amen. Amen. Can the church say amen? Amen. Amen one more time. Amen. Amen. It is so good to see all of you all. I tell you, visitors and uh, uh, Rosa Sharon is in the house. <laughs> Sister, Sister, Sister Brian, thank you so much for inviting your friends. You know, uh, when you see something or experience something good, or if you hear a good joke, or read a good book, or see a good story, first thing you want to do is go tell your friends about it. So I am so pleased and happy that when uh, Flora comes down to the church and she experiences such a good thing, then she goes back and tells other people about it. And that's what God wants us to do. Amen? Amen, amen. This is our third, third Sunday in the Advent season. And at this time, we're going to light our third candle. And we're going to ask if Sister Charlene <laughs> Harlow, Marlow, would come and help us with lighting of our candle. Amen. You can participate along with us, for we will have it written on the screen, those things that you would do. You can bring on this side. Good morning, church. Good morning. We praise thee, O Lord, who has given us the perfect love through Jesus Christ. We come to thee this day with warm hearts and sincere thanks for the gift of salvation. <laughs> Got a lock on his for this back. Let us all now read together. 
We light this candle to show the light of Christ that came into the world through the love of God. We light this candle to remind us of the love and joy that God gives us each day. Thanks be to God for his love. And we will sing the verse of final night. this meditation. Help us feel your presence. We pray that we may feel your love and the joy it brings. This coming week, let us show that love to all we meet. Let us remember the great joy of Jesus' birth. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord some praise. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Marlowe. Amen, amen, amen. You know, normally, if it wasn't for the pandemic, this would be the time when we would ask all of you all to rise from your seats, hug one another, pass the peace of, the Lord, the peace of God from one person to the other. But because of that, we're just going to ask you if, you can able, if you're able to stand and just look around and wave your hand at everybody and say, God loves you, and so do I. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, amen. This is the uh, season that we are preparing ourselves for the coming Christ child. And we're getting closer and closer each week. And some of you all are getting more and more concerned because you haven't gotten all your shopping done. But regardless of whether you get it all done or not, God is still blessing each and every one of us. We got so much to be thankful for. You know, I, uh, last night I, I tell you all all the time about this big tree that's in my backyard. And we're praying that when the wind blows, we're praying that if that tree decides to fall, let it fall away from the house. Because I, I keep looking at it and I measure it all the time and I say, you know, if that thing comes to the house, it's going to hit us. But we are so fortunate that uh, storms come, winds blow, but we're still here. Our church is still here. The piano is here, the organ is here, the keyboard is here, everything is still intact. But if you think about what happened in Mayfield, Kentucky, all of those uh, churches, it seemed like every church in the, in the town was destroyed. I mean completely destroyed. Uh, such devastation, you, you, you can't begin to imagine. It, looks, it looked as though somebody dropped a bomb on that town. And then, uh, my old uh, school, uh, Southern Illinois University in, in Edwardsville, Illinois. I know they said it's right outside of St. Louis, and it is, but it's right across the river. Edwardsville was hit, and I think they had a manufacturing plant there, uh, uh, one of the uh, distributors companies, and it was completely total and, and lives lost, and we're, 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 we're praying for those people then when you think about it, I think it was a nursing home in Arkansas. The whole wing, the right wing of the nursing home is gone. And uh, death uh, to those who couldn't get out. And you think about all of the devastation that's going on. And 
how that storm just moved through. And they said that this particular tornado, normally they stay on the ground maybe two minutes, three minutes. This thing is on the ground for like 10 minutes and it's cutting a, a path like about two miles wide as it goes through that area. And here we are this morning in a sanctuary, blessing and thanking the Lord for what he has done for us. So our hearts go out to all of those, uh, all of those uh, people uh, who uh, lost everything. Can you imagine? I, I mean, if, if, if you lose a, a, a photo of your mother or your grandmother or your father or something, and you, you know, you're upset over it. But imagine losing everything, photographs, uh, money, computers, furniture, Christmas trees, and if you've already bought gifts, toys, that's all gone. But yet, the Lord spared us, and we are blessed. So we're praying for all of those who were affected by the tornadoes that came through. We're praying for that family that lost, a, 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 well, the, the fire broke out, and uh, three of the, two of the kids were able to jump from the second floor, but the poor little girl was, was stuck, locked in a bedroom and couldn't get out. We're praying for her, praying for her family, praying for uh, uh, Sister Leola Venable, for on Saturday morning, early Saturday morning, her uh, oldest daughter uh, left this world, went home to be with God. And we're praying for Leola because we know we will miss Elaine Dillard. Uh, we're praying for her husband, John. We're praying for her daughter Darlene as well as the brothers her brothers we're praying for all of them and we're praying a, a special prayer for Miss Venable it's something when you lose a, a child normally you think in terms that the child will will bury the parent but uh, Sister Venable is 94 years old now and she is uh, at a point where you know her kids are getting up in age and She's going through it. So we're just asking you all a special prayer for the Venable family uh, on this morning. Also, pray for my wife, uh, First Lady. I know some of you all were asking, where is she? Right about now, she should be delivering her sermon over at the Progressive Baptist Church. They're celebrating their church anniversary as well as the pastor's anniversary. And they had asked if she would come and bring the message and uh, it, was, it was interesting because they, they were saying, well, if we take the first lady, do we have anybody? Do you have anybody? Well, then they said, well, you got Reverend Johnson, don't you? And I said, yeah, we have Reverend Johnson, so we, <laughs> we can spare the first lady. Amen. <laughs> but we're praying for all of you all who are here today that might not be feeling well. I know we got arthritis, and uh, arthritis is brother of bursitis, and... Uh, coming and and uh, Joshua looking at me Joshua doesn't know anything about <laughs> Joshua doesn't know anything about uh, arthritis <laughs> but but I say young man keep living and <laughs> you, you'll find out about about all of those itises that affect us we're praying that uh, the Lord will give you some peace give you uh, the healings that you're looking for praying for this country for it seems to be uh, all just completely upside down with uh, uh, things that are happening to us. You know, really, some people ask me, they say, Pastor, do you think we're in the end times uh, because of all of what's going on in the world? And my answer to them is, no, I don't believe we're in the end times. Uh, things such as this has happened in the past. We just didn't know about it. But I do think that God is trying to get our attention for all of the, the divisiveness and the that's going on and the lack of love that's in this country right now, I, I think some, some way he's getting our attention. For these communities that have been hit by the tornadoes, they are now working together. And you have government leaders who voting against the things that the president wants to do, they are now on the phone saying, can you help us in Kentucky? Can you help us now? And, you know, you look at this and you say, where were you when I was asking for you to help us? 
to pass laws or pass things that can help the people. Why do we have to wait? Why do you have to wait until there's an accident at the corner and three people are killed in an automobile accident before you put a stop sign up? Why is it that we have to wait for a tornado to hit before these government agencies and leaders can now say, oh yes, now can you help us? This country is getting to be very, very divisive. And I think the Lord is trying to get our attention. So we are praying for all of our leaders. We're praying for uh, uh, this country and we're praying for this church. Let us go before this throne of grace in prayer. Heavenly Father, merciful Lord, you heard the names that we have called, but you know the names that are in our hearts. You know those who are sitting right in this sanctuary before us right now. You know that they're, they have their own problems, they have their own aches and pains, they have their own concerns that they're dealing with. We're asking you, Heavenly Father, to bless them, put a hedge around them, lift them up. Let them know that you're still in the blessing business. Let them know that you still are in the you're in control regardless of what's going on in the world or what it looks like you are still in control asking heavenly father that you touch those families names that we mentioned the ones that were hit by the tornado as well as the venerable family heavenly father and heavenly father at the same time that the venerable family and sister venerable is dealing with the death of her daughter she's also grieving and and, con and is concerned about her other daughter, Sylvia, because Sylvia's son, Chip, is now in hospice, in, in, in hospice care at JFK Hospital. And we're, we're praying for that family, the Irby family, Heavenly Father, for we know that Sylvia is, is already grieving the loss of a sister at the same time that she's grieving uh, what's happening with her son Chip. So we're praying for Sister Venable family, the grandkids as well. We're praying for all of you who are here, praying for this church. We thank the Lord that he has spared us to let us go ahead and proclaim his word. We ask this all in the matchless name of his son, Jesus Christ. And for his sake, we do pray all the saints said, amen, amen. Amen. Can you all sing a song with me? Uh, just to, to end this on such a sweet, sweet note. Let us sing, uh, He's Sweet I Know. And we can end our prayer on something that's very, very powerful. He's Sweet I Know. He's Sweet I Know. Our scripture reading this morning is found in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, 
to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greetings this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord will give him the throne of, the fa of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. This ends the reading of God's word, God's word for the people of God. Amen. At this time, we're going to ask for our rushers to come forward for our offering. Well, it's offering time. It's offering time. It gives you an opportunity to give back a portion of what God has blessed you with. We're so thankful that our members are tithers and they are sending in their tithes. And those of you who are not members who are watching this, this service, we're asking that you support this service by sending in your contribution. You can do it one of three ways. If you're near the church, around the church, you can always make a deposit in the mailbox at the church. The church is there. Also, if you would like to mail in, send in a check or a money order, we'd be happy to receive it. The address is on the screen in 87 Grove Avenue, Edison, New Jersey, 08820. Also, those of you who would like to use your credit card, you can also send a donation in using PayPal. Uh, you, we will accept all of the major credit cards and we'll be so happy to receive contributions from you. So we know that you're going to be faithful, obedient to God's will to give children. So let us now pray over this offer. Heavenly Father, we come before you thanking you for these who have given back a portion of what you have blessed them with. We ask now, Heavenly Father, that you bless it, consecrate it, let it be multiplied tenfold. Surely, Heavenly Father, so we can use it here on earth for your kingdom. We ask now that you bless it in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Our sermonic hymn this morning is Angels We Have Heard on High. 
Let us sing with the music on the screen, Angels We Have Heard On High. Give the Lord some praise. Give the Lord some praise. Amen, amen. <laughs> oh boy. See, in order for you all to get in this Christmas spirit, you, you, you got to have some things that, 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 that symbolizes the spirit for you. You got to be like pastor. The pastor saw it's a wonderful life on television. Who saw Frosty the Snowman? No, not Frosty. If you saw It's a Wonderful Life, George Bailey, that gets you into the spirit. Oh, George Bailey seeing what the world would be like if he had never been born. Then you have to be like pastor and pull out something that is spiritual. I've been wearing this necktie every Christmas since 1990. This, this necktie is older than you, Joshua. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Every Christmas since I was a deacon over at New Hope Baptist Church, I uh, started wearing this necktie. Uh, floor, I even wore it over at Travelers. <laughs> when I was at Travelers, I wore, I wore this necktie. This necktie has been around. It's a Christmas necktie. <laughs> Amen. And that puts you into the spirit. See, otherwise you'll sit back and you'll be like Ebenezer Scrooge, waiting for something to happen, waiting for 
Christmas past and Christmas present and Christmas future to come. But you have to get in the spirit now. Amen. Because we don't know what tomorrow will bring. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Rather than giving honor to God, I'm just happy to be here and I'm happy to see all of you all this morning. Uh, this is a great uh, day. It's the third Sunday in Advent. And we have been preparing ourselves to get ready for uh, that glorious morning when the baby Jesus uh, will be born. Amen? Amen, 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 amen. We want to thank Reverend Johnson for reading that passage of Scripture. It's, uh, it's one that we're all familiar with. And uh, sometime during the Christmas season, you're going to hear a preacher or a pastor or or somebody preach or speak on Luke 1, 26, 38, when the angel Gabriel comes to see Mary. Amen? Yes. Well, let me just ask you a question. Have you ever had someone to give you a gift uh, that you were not expecting, an unexpected gift just came? I, I, I always tell the story about... Uh, Sister Grace Smith. Uh, Sister Smith, I guess she was probably in her late 80s, early 90s when I was at uh, New Hope. And I was a deacon there, and she would come up, and she was, how you doing, Deacon Cully? And she would reach out her hand and shake my hand. And when she let my hand go, there would be a $5 bill rolled up in my hand. And I would immediately look at Sister Grace and say, uh, Miss Smith, you, you know, you're on a fixed income. I'm working. You don't have to do this. And she would look at me and she says, uh, Deacon Cully, you want to take away my blessing? I said, no, ma'am. She said, well, shut up and take the money. <laughs> and I learned right there to just shut up and take the money. <clears throat> but it was an unexpected gift. There was nothing that I had done. But I was very, very appreciative. But let me ask you a question. If somebody gives you a gift that's unexpected, what if this gift now requires you to change your lifestyle, change the way you see things, change the way you do things, change the places that you go? See, sometimes God can give us a gift but that gift really is more or less a burden to us. <laughs> but we want to talk about a gift that gives you joy, the one that God gave to Mary. So just for a few minutes, let me just share with you a, a sermon that's entitled, An Unexpected Gift of Joy. An Unexpected Gift of Joy. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, merciful Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this time. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for those who have gathered here to hear a word from you. We pray now that you allow Tom Cully to remain seated. But let your goodness, your grace, and your mercy come through his voice. So some boy, some girl, some man, some woman, some boy, some, 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 some person might be moved and edified to be able to call on you and be saved by you. We ask now, Heavenly Father, that you give... Tom Cully preaching power. Let him be able to say what you have put on his heart and surely we'll be so careful to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. An unexpected gift that brings joy. You see, Gabriel brought Mary a message of joy. When Reverend Johnson read that passage, and when you go home and read it, reread it, you'll see that it was a message of joy. But it was a message that she was not expecting. The Lord is with you. Do not be afraid, the angel tells her. Uh, you can be, uh, be sure that Mary was afraid. She was probably gripped with fear seeing an angel. You know, our idea of an angel is this cute little cherubin 
thing with the nice little wings and all. And uh, uh, so no one would be afraid. But when you think about what an angel really was, angels were fearful looking people, things, beings. I shouldn't say people, but beings. So throughout the Bible, when an angel appears, the first words out of that angel's mouth is, don't be afraid. And remember now, when God put Adam and Eve out of the garden, he left an angel there to guard the garden to keep them from going back in. So don't think of angels as being little wimpy little beings. I mean, uh, during the uh, Renaissance season, uh, uh, century, during that period, they drew angels that way because the angels were frightening people. So they drew the angels so that they would look more human-like. <laughs> but have no fear. Angels, when you see an angel, you will be afraid. And this angel tells her, do not be afraid because God is with you. We can, uh, uh, we call it a virgin birth, but I guess Mary probably called it a dilemma, a problem, because now she has a gift, but what is she going to do with this gift that has been given to her? You see, sometimes when God gives us things, it means that we now have to do something different. Remember uh, J uh, Peter and John uh, walking up to the temple and the beggar is, is there begging for alms and his friends had brought him there every year, every, every day. They would bring him and sit him in front of the temple and he would beg for alms. And one day he asked John, he asked Peter, he says, give me some alms and they said silver and gold I have none but what I will give you is to get up and walk in the name of Jesus Christ that was a gift but now what did the beggar have to do the beggar now have to get up and walk what does that mean he can't sit there and, uh, and ask for alms anymore he probably got to go to work he's got to do something so sometimes you know these gifts that we get you say oh I've been blessed with a gift uh, the Holy Spirit is in me. Yes. Now you are required to love everyone. <laughs> you are required to, 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 to clothe the naked. You are now required to give food to those who need food. There, in other words, there are consequences and responsibilities that comes with the gift. Well, anyway, uh, this was a problem for Mary because Mary was, was, was married. Well, she was betrothed to be married. Uh, and it was a Jewish custom to begin a marriage by drawing up a legal contract between the father of the groom and the father of the bride, pledging them to each other. And that had been done for Mary. So this marriage contract was called a betrothal. You all remember that. The couple was called husband and wife by virtue of the marriage contract. So Mary was married. Uh, the marriage was not completed until at least 12 months after the betrothal contract had been drawn up. Why 12 months? Well, the 12 month waiting period was deemed necessary because of the low state of morals at that day, during that time. That period of time gave sufficient time to reveal whether the woman was pregnant when the contract was drawn up, or if she would become pregnant by an unlawful, unfaithful act being joined uh, uh, by contract to her husband. If the woman uh, proved to be immoral, the marriage need not to be completed. The contract could be broken by divorce, and in this case, the Jewish authorities could have her stoned to death. Why am I telling you all this? I'm telling you all this so you'll understand that Mary was married, number one. Number two, the culture had a waiting period because they wanted to make sure that the woman was not pregnant. And if the woman had been pregnant, that meant that she had done something immoral and she could be stoned. 
That's the predicament that Mary found herself in. You know, it's a problem for us even today. You see, God can give you a gift, but uh, you see that gift as a problem. A gift of a baby to an unwedded mother can be a problem for that mother. A gift from God of an opportunity for you to better yourself, but you have to give up drinking, or you might have to give up clubbing, or you might have to give up some other thing that you like to do. God gave Joshua a gift. He says, I'm going to tell you how to bring down the walls of Jericho. But that gift that God gave him was a problem for Joshua. Because Joshua now had to go back and talk to his veteran, seasoned, warring generals that we're going to take this city by marching around it seven times, beating on tin cans and yelling. Well, wait a minute, God, they'll look at me like I'm a, I'm a fool, I'm crazy. It's like, but that's the gift, and that's what you have to do. The gift might not make sense to you, but it's the gift of faith. A lot of times we get gifts from God, and we don't understand them, and we sometimes we don't even accept the gift. But it's a gift of faith. Mary had to have faith that what the angel told her would happen. And all would be all right because the Lord is with you, Mary. Mary, you know, you don't talk a lot about Mary, but Mary, if you go and read the songs of Mary, you will find that Mary uses a lot of scripture. Mary was knowledgeable, meaning that her father and mother had taught her something. So then Mary had faith in what the angel was saying. What can go wrong if God is with you? Uh, think of the fear that must have been in Mary's heart. First reaction probably was uh, some, if an angel came to one of you all right now and said that you're going to have a baby, you say, oh, you must be kidding. <laughs> you got to be crazy. So I'm quite sure her first reaction was, uh, you got to be crazy. I'm still a virgin. No man has been with me. Have someone ever told you that you could do something that seemed impossible and they come up and tell you that? Well, this seemed like it was impossible for Mary. But Gabriel assured Mary that it was the work of the Holy Spirit, that God was with her. Well, her next thought was probably one that I like to use. It probably was, uh, my father's going to kill me. See, it was bad enough trying to marry off a young girl who was morally clean. So you can imagine now a father trying to marry off a daughter who now is pregnant without a husband. So I'm quite sure she was wondering, what in the world is my father going to say? He said, uh, 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 the angel reassured her, said that, listen, Elizabeth, uh, in her old age, is also going to have a child as well. Uh, and, and it was a miracle because you remember now, for those of you who are, who, 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 who are Bible students, you know that Elizabeth was the mother of John the Baptist, John. So Elizabeth was already six months pregnant with John. So Mary felt a little bit more comfortable, comfortable knowing that, well, at least I'll be going through this pregnancy with Elizabeth. Uh, that's the wonderful thing about it, that God always gives somebody else help with you. Uh, remember uh, uh, Moses getting ready to go before Pharaoh, and he says, uh, uh, you know, I stutter, I stammer, I'm not real good at talking. Uh, what am I going to say in front of Pharaoh? He says, don't worry about it. I'll send you your brother. I'll send you your big brother along with you. So a lot of times when we're going through stuff, one of the reasons why we say uh, 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 to gather in the church to, to, I mean, I know people watch on television and we, we say, hey, it's easy, it's, it's comforting, it's convenient. But we say, <clears throat> forsake not the, the assembly of God's people. And the reason being is when you come together, you'll find that people can uplift you. You'll you find that you're going through some of the same things that somebody else has already gone through. And they will help you 
to get through it. And that's the reason why uh, the angel is letting Mary know that Elizabeth is going through the same thing that you're going through. She didn't understand the miracle either, but she's going through it. Well, the next thing that you have to ask yourself about this is the fact that if somebody gave you an unexpected gift of joy, can you handle the joy? <laughs> can you handle the joy? <laughs> yeah, Gabriel laid a second piece of joy on Mary. He said, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son. Can you hear the surprise in that? Mary, you will conceive and have a son. What could be more astonishing than God placing his most awesome work in the hands of a 16-year-old peasant girl named Mary? I'm afraid to have a 16-year-old girl to be a babysitter for my kid, let alone raise Jesus. Uh, 16, Pastor? Where'd you get 16? I don't remember reading that in the Bible. No, you will not read 16 in the Bible. <laughs> but if you study the Jewish culture, you will know that during that time, uh, it was customary to betroth a daughter between the ages of 15, 16, 17 years old. So keeping to Jewish custom, I'm quite sure if Mary is being betrothed, she's probably 16 or 17 years old. She's a teenager, in other words. So that's where I get the 16 for all of you all eyebrows that went up when I see it 16. When I see it 16. During that time, uh, uh, young ladies uh, from 12 through 17, they were married during that period of time. So that's where I get the 16. You know, you can have an unexpected gift that brings you joy. I uh, had an unexpected uh, gift. My granddaughter asked me to preside at her wedding. Now, that was unexpected, and it was a joyous occasion. But my granddaughter lives in Kansas City, Missouri, which now says that I have to get on an airplane and fly to Kansas City, Missouri. And uh, during the pandemic, and you enclosed in this little aluminum can for three hours with people who don't want to wear masks. Not only that, in order for me to preside at the wedding, we have to go through a marriage council. So now I'm responsible, required to by way of Zoom to have marriage counseling with her and her fiance. And when you do marriage counseling, you talk, to, you talk about all kinds of stuff. Financial issues, social issues, sexual issues. Now, how do I talk to my granddaughter? <laughs> but it was an unexpected gift that brought me joy but it also brought a responsibility. It brought out a, a part of me that I hadn't thought about that now I have to figure out how do I talk with my granddaughter and I, can, I don't even see her as a little baby anymore. I'm looking at a 26 year old woman. How do I talk with her? So sometimes, you know, these gifts unexpected brings a change in your relationship. In our scripture, Mary is going to bear a child. His name will be Jesus. And he, he, he came from God. He is God's son. <laughs> yes, he was born of a woman, but his father is God. The emphasis is not primarily on Mary, but on the power of Almighty God. And as one theologian put it, Jesus is not the product of human evolution, the highest achievement of the human race, he is the product of the intervention of God into human history. He is now part of us. Oh my goodness. Mary has this responsibility. It's an it's a unexpected gift, 
But look at the responsibility that comes with it. She's going to raise Jesus, the son. But Mary's heart must have skipped another beat when she thought about her turn to uh, Joseph. Now, what am I going to tell my fiancé, my husband, my betrothed uh, husband, that I'm pregnant? How am I going to deal with that? Fear was always gripping, gripping us, telling us that uh, what we are about to do is impossible. A lot of us are so fearful right now. We have people who are afraid to go uh, among people right now because of the pandemic. We got people who are afraid to go to the grocery store. We got people who are having groceries delivered to their homes because they don't want to go out. We have people who are afraid when they get a cough, immediately they think, oh, COVID. If they sneeze, oh, it must be COVID. No, 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 it's just a pollen in the air. No, 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 it's just a regular flu season. It's just a common cold. But we're fearful now. We, we, we have these fears. And Mary must have been fearful. She must have felt that way. Even with all of Gabriel's convincing words, Mary probably still had a little funny feeling in her stomach. Mary surely thought that her fiancé, Joseph, would not endure the public disgrace. What do I tell him? But an angel appeared to Joseph, as well as to Mary, and told Joseph not to have any fear. Told Joseph the whole story of how she became impregnated. The whole story on go ahead and marry her. Don't have her stoned. Don't divorce her. That's how God is. He will make a way out of no way. Things that seem impossible, he will make a way that, that, that the impossible becomes possible. Joseph, do not fear to take Mary as your wife. Mary, do not fear. You have found favor with God. Zechariah and Elizabeth, do not have fear. Your prayers have been heard. Do not fear. It's the greatest gift of Christmas, the baby Jesus, this gift that I'm giving you. God's great light coming into the world this season banishes the darkness and drives the fear from our hearts. Have no fear. Everything is going to be all right. Mary, a 16-year-old peasant girl, will have the responsibility to raise Jesus the Christ. Remember, Jesus will be a child born in poverty and obscurity. He is a simple boy of Nazareth rambunctious, and learning the trade of carpentry alongside his father. He is unnoticed for years while living in a family of little means. This is the joy that God has given, uh, given uh, the, the God has given this gift to Mary. What joy has God given to you? How many of you all have received a gift from God and that you are so pleased with but it also requires you responsibility. You sit there and uh, you think about Joshua has the gift to play the piano. But what comes with that? A need and a requirement to use that talent in a church so that his playing can uplift those who hear his playing. See, a lot of times we don't realize that when God gives us something, we are to use it for him. Amen? Amen. 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 He is a simple boy in Nazareth, but she has been given his job to raise him, to bring him up. This is the joy that God has given Mary. What joy has he given you? In Sunday school, I heard the question being asked this morning. What gift has he given you? Somebody said, John 3.16. <laughs> for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son for us yes well in Ephesians uh, will tell us how you are preparing for this joy during this Advent season how are you preparing Ephesians 4 11 says it was he who gave some to be apostles some to be prophets some to be evangelists and some to be pastors and teachers to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until he, we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge 
of the Son of God and become new, new uh, uh, mature in our beliefs, attaining to the whole measure, the fullness of Christ. Some will read this and think that, oh, you have to be a preacher. Oh, I have to be a deacon. Oh, I have to be a deaconess. Or they may think that I don't have any gifts. What did he give me? Well, he gave all of us something. That's not true. Matthew, uh, the 28th uh, uh, chapter, verse 19 tells us, Therefore, <laughs> go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. He has given you this commandment to do this. The body of Christ has many gifts available to it. And you are the body of Christ. The gift of ministry, the gift of mercy, the gift of love, the gift of exhortation, the gift of helps, the gift, the gift of presence, just being present, being there, so that the person know that you are just there with them is a gift. Gift of faith, having a little faith, the gift of encouraging words, say something encouraging to the person. A gift of friendship, just being a friend for a person. A gift of financial, if you can help someone. What did they say? I, I was listening to the folks down in, 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 in Kentucky. They say the community came together. People came uh, from all walks of life, and they're helping us to rebuild and to, to, to look through the wreckage to find uh, our belongings and those who might be lost. You can always visit the sick. You can always give a hug to someone. You can always give a smile. You know, that works wonders when you smile. And I can see all of y'all smiling now. I can, boy, I tell you, look, you're just smiling. You give it away, you see your eyebrows move up. <laughs> I heard that joke on the television last night. The guy said that my wife uh, had, <laughs> had her eyebrows painted onto her head. But they painted them too high. And he says, well, well, how did she look? And he, he said, she looked surprised. <laughs> so you all look like you're smiling right now. <laughs> and as Christian members, you, you can always uh, 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 smile for somebody. You're on the front line. You're the ones, you're the peacemakers. You're the one that's supposed to be there to calm uh, the, the chaos that's happening around you. You are the uh, uh, peacekeepers. If, you rec if, if required, each one should be able to give a helping hand to someone in need. If required, each one of us should be able to give a word of encouragement. I never have a fear when I say, well, uh, I'm not going to be at church uh, because I have no fear. Any one of you all can stand here and give a word about the goodness of Jesus Christ. Any one of you, oh, you'll be nervous. Oh, yeah, your knees will be shaking. Oh, yeah, your voice will be trembling. But each one of you will be able to stand and say what God did for you. And you will be able to preach a sermon, which will be nothing more than a testimony of how good God is. You see, we can do these things. Jesus says, take the talent from him and give it to the one who has the ten talents. You all remember that story. The more you do to glorify God, the more opportunities he will provide for you to do even more. So yes, so you took the ten talents and you multiplied them. But guess what? God is saying, all right, to whom much is given, much is required. So I'm going to give you even more to do. So anyway, let me conclude this sermon. What happened to this gift of joy? What happened to the gift that God gave Mary. Well, the joy, the child, was God with us. I love, I love the way uh, John, I told you all last week, John puts it a different way. John says the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Yes, we know that in Bethlehem a baby is born. And Jesus now takes 
his most important works that he's ever done before. You know, he didn't do it in a big splash like uh, uh, bringing the Jews out of uh, captivity out of Egypt. He didn't do it like uh, opening up the Red Sea and parting the waters. That was big. He didn't even do it like flooding the whole world and saving just Noah and his family. He didn't do it that way. He did it in a very simple way. On a, a, mo a morning, one morning, a little pregnant teenager gives birth to a baby that we call the Christ, the anointed one. Jesus is his name. And she is now responsible for raising him and raising him in a way that he will be all of what has been prophesied to be. Let me just share something with you that I read. There's a poet, she's passed on now, I think she passed, died at the age of 81, Dorothy Nolte. She wrote a book called Children Learn What They Live. Let me just take an excerpt from what she said. She said, if a child lives with criticism, he learns to condemn. If a child lives with hostility, he learns to fight. If a child lives with ridicule, he learns to be shy. If a child lives with shame, he learns to feel guilty. If a child lives with fear, he learns to be apprehensive. If a child lives with pity, he learns to feel sorry for himself. But she also writes, but if a child lives with encouragement, he learns confidence. If a child lives with tolerance, he learns to be patient. If a child lives with praise, he learns to appreciate. If a child lives with security, he learns to have faith. If a child lives with acceptance, he learns to love. If a child lives with approval, he learns to like himself. If a child lives with recognition, he learns to have goals in life. If a child lives with fairness, he learns justice. If a child lives with honesty, he learns truth. And if a child lives with sincerity, he learns to have faith in himself and those around him. If a child lives with love, he learns that the world is a wonderful place. And if a child lives with friendship, he learns joy. You can imagine the job that Mary had. Mary brought up Jesus Christ. Jesus the one who is patient with us. <laughs> Jesus the one who is wisdom to tell us to turn the other cheek when someone hits us. Jesus is the one who tells us to love even our enemies. Jesus is the one who's telling us how to walk in this world. Jesus is the one who's telling John, who says, I should, yeah, you should be baptizing me. He says, no, it's right for you to baptize me. Jesus Christ is the one who is leading us. Jesus Christ's love for us is the reason why he said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they're doing. Jesus Christ, because he cared about us and he knew to be obedient to his Father, he says, not my will, but your will. Yes, I tell you on this third Sunday, yes, you will get a gift <laughs> unexpectedly, and it's going to be a gift of joy. You see, you see, a few Sundays ago, uh, I'm going to embarrass her, but a few Sundays ago, Sister Bryant, <laughs> Sister Flora came to the church, and she got a gift. It was not an unexpected gift. 
She just came, oh, I'll come and praise him. But the sermon, the singing, the people hit her in a way that gave her joy. And because she had that gift of joy, she had to do something about it. And what did she do? She said, I have to go tell my friends. <laughs> I got to go and tell them. I, I know they belong to another church. I, I know that, the, that they could go someplace else. But I want them to come down and experience the joy that I experienced. You see, when Jesus, when God puts a gift in your heart, you have to do something with it. You can't just sit there and say, oh, isn't that nice? You got to go tell somebody. <laughs> Next Sunday, we'll be singing that song, go tell it on the mountain. You got to tell somebody how good God is and what he's done for you. So yes, yes, an unexpected gift, standing there in front of my granddaughter and her little husband to be grinning and I'm standing there asking them to take their vows and I'm watching him give vows of love to my granddaughter how he will take care of her how he will uh, love her until death do them part and it's just, just watching that, I'm saying, I'm to the point where I almost forgot what I was supposed to be doing. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there filled up with listening to that and watching the little granddaughter that I watched my daughter raise that sat on my knee, now 26 years old, and she's confessing her love to this man that she would take care of him. And I said, Lord, have mercy. Isn't it a beautiful gift? It was unexpected. I had to do something to, 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 with it. But it was a gift of joy. How many of you can think about a gift that was unexpected, but it was a gift of joy? The most precious gift that we will ever get will be that on the 25th of December when we all celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ the greatest gift in the world. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's give him some praise. He's worthy for our praise. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. I tell y'all, uh, God is good. And all the time, he's good. Well, when the word is preached, we make, we make no assumption that everyone within, within the hearing of our voice has accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. And I know he has given you a gift. And if you were able to confess to him all of your sins and you truly and honestly believe that he died on Calvary's cross for your sins, spent uh, three days in a borrowed tomb, and on that third day arose with all power, now sit on the right hand of the Father in heaven, intervening, mediating on our behalf. Every time we do something wrong, he's, forgive them, Father, for they not know what they're doing. If you truly believe that, then my Bible tells me that you already have salvation, you already have a place in heaven. But if you would like to join a band of believers, this church, Mount Pleasant Baptist Church, then I will be at the back door at the end of service. Just whisper in my ear, pull my robe. Let me know that you would love to join this church and I will let it happen. I will make sure it happens. And those of you who are watching over the internet, send me an email or call the church and leave a message on the phone at the church and I will get back to you. And we will let you know how you can become a virtual member if you don't come in person. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. Let's give the Lord some praise, church. Let the Lord. What key did we do? I think we got the right key to stand. Let the church say amen. We've been working out these keys. Yeah, that's it. Let the church say amen. Let the church Amen. Please rise from your seats. 
let the church well God has spoken let the one more time the invitation is given I'll be at the back door let me know if you would like to join this church and we will make it happen let the church well God has spoken amen 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 Heavenly Father we thank you so much for we know that you do things for us unexpectedly on a daily basis and some of us on an hour, hourly basis. Sometimes we forget to say thank you. Sometimes we wish that maybe you had blessed us that way because now it requires us to do something with the blessing that you have given us. But we thank you, Heavenly Father, for the unexpected gift of joy, your Son, Jesus Christ, for that Holy Spirit that dwells within us when things go bad in our lives, when things come up in front of us and we don't quite understand that Holy Spirit inside of us whispers us the same message that Gabriel gave to Mary. Have no fear. God is with you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for putting that in us. Thank you for the baby Jesus. Thank you for your gift. We pray now, Heavenly Father, that as we leave this place, we believe edified uplifted, excited <laughs> as we now wait for the birth of your son Jesus. We pray this prayer in the name of your son Jesus Christ and for his sake we do pray. Amen. Amen. Remember the meeting of Pastor Zaid immediately after the service. Let us pray. Now unto him who presents us faultless before his throne of grace. Rule, rest, and abide in these his people henceforth and forevermore all the saints said amen amen amen, amen. 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 go in peace let the church say amen.